Hi, everybody. I'm testing out my mic. So if you can let me know if you can. Oh, good. <laughs> I already got a thumbs up. Hello. Hello, everybody. I'm so excited to have you here. Just doing my little techie stuff. So it's been about, oh, five or so years since I've uh, taught anything with a mic right here in my ear. <laughs> So hopefully it doesn't fall out in downward facing dog or anything like that. And uh, <laughs> and uh, it's been, this is my first uh, yoga class to teach since uh, we closed the building. So I'm so grateful, so honored to have you all here. And I'm just, uh, if you're if you're open to it, feel free to start video on your end and that just opens up your camera so I can see you. Um, Hopefully, I'm the biggest image that you see, just so you know what we're doing. Um, and you guys will let me know, I hope. Getting excited and waving to people, but you guys are not on the recording. So, uh, so it's all good. If you want to have music in your background, you're welcome to. And, uh, you know, whatever props you like to have, um, I have my yoga mat. You want to make sure that wherever you place it, it feels like it's going to be stable. Okay, so I'm on my rug, but it still feels like it's, it's solid. Okay, so hopefully, so give me a thumbs up. Can you still hear me from here? I'm okay. <laughs> I'm on a Bluetooth and I'm totally paranoid and uncomfortable, like lack of confidence with a lot of technology. So yeah, there we go. Anyway, the props that I have, so you do not have to have a foam roller at all. I just like it. And I talk about it a lot when I teach, when I talk about warrior one and down dog and that kind of activation. So I might pull it out. I also love it for ending stretches for the low back. I have um, my yoga blocks and a strap. And nothing is required. So if you have no props, don't even worry about it. If you have props, great. Get them, make them handy. You could use a chair for really nice tall blocks. I, I totally will take advantage of any furniture that I have around. I practice every morning and I use my bed frame and I use the walls and I use the windowsill. I use everything. So um, use what you have and it's convenient to you. If you're near a wall, that's fantastic. It can be a really solid uh, sensation for all kinds of different um, poses. You can anchor your feet. You can anchor your hands. So there's just all kinds of things you can do. Even if I can't see your pictures, I can see your name. So I'm so excited. All the people that I see from, again, from Kansas and Colorado. And thank you. I hope that, you know, if you're joining, if it's at 11.15, I hope that this is still good and convenient in your life. You might, oh, and just, just a heads up, uh, my, my husband went to go pick up my, our daughter from uh, Target. Her shift ended at 10, and um, the dogs, we have three dogs, and they might just be very enthusiastic. So I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully that will not interrupt our Zen yoga practice. They have their own couch, if you can see that behind me, because we have grown children, so our, ch our children are our doggies. Okay, so we're gonna get started in another minute. Um, if you do uh, drink water, make it small sips, just because of the things that we do. Uh, I am so, just love it. Again, if you want me to be able to see you, you can turn on your camera. <laughs> Jan, yeah, I see Chris. I mean, I could do that whole game where I see Krista and I see Julie and I see Elizabeth. <laughs> it just oh, makes me very, very, very happy. So um, feel free. I'll, I'll check the chat a little bit here and there. So if you want to request any yoga poses, that would be a, a great place to do so. Um, the other thing is, because sometimes it can just be really calming to have yoga language kind of go in in the background. If there are any poses that you want to do that I haven't gotten to and 
they're really just part of what you're yearning for today, please do them. Okay, so we're going to get started. I'm going to start out standing just to just double check that you can hear me well. Um, so I'm just going to, and, and oh, I'm going to, sorry, one more, and I promise we'll get started. Okay. Ah, you're welcome to start out seated. I'm just kind of doing a standing meditation, a standing grounding experience. So you could do this seated. You could do this in a chair. I just want you to find where you connect with the ground that you're rooting and you're elongating through your spine. Good, and that your spine can grow like a tree. So right now, this is, I'm in mountain pose. Or samastitihi equals standing pose. I always love that translation, that word. So I'm trying to stand equally on my feet. My hands are together, connected at my heart. Your eyes could be opened or closed. I'm trying to feel that awareness of standing in my heels, standing in the balls of the feet, and then applying that equal sense of rooting. I'm just gonna turn on profile. I'm trying to stack the ears over shoulders, over hips. You can bend your knees a little bit, maybe even balance a little just to feel that connection. We take standing, potentially most of the time, most of the time we can take standing for granted. Good, and feel how your body receives breath. So we'll come into some half sun salutations. We're going to be reaching up, hinging forward, coming up midway, lowering maybe deeper into your forward fold. So I just want you to gauge it and do what feels best to you. Potentially bending the knees, inhale, to reach up, really lengthen. So we're rooting to rise. And then exhale, knees can be bent or straight. I'm just coming into a hinge. Maybe you're bringing hands down the legs or to the mat or to block. I'm gonna come up midway. My hamstrings are not tight. Okay, so it's really easy for me to maintain straight legs in a very comfortable way. I want you to be here for a few breaths so you can explore. Lengthen on your inhale. Maintain the length if you explore depth. Really check in with the pace of your breath, the feeling in your neck, throughout your spine, maybe shifting a little bit forward and back on your feet. Feeling how that affects the position. I'm going to bend the knees to come up midway, lengthen. I like to press my hands and legs into one another, this variation of Utkatasana. We think of it as chair pose. It translates more something like fierce. Okay, so I'm pressing my thighs and hands into each other, still in that equal weight across the feet, and I'm going to elevate my heels. So I'm going to lift the heels and lower the heels. And you want to maintain equal space, right? Length between your ears and your shoulders. And I'm elevating again. I'm trying to trigger the glutes elongation always through the spine, ease around the neck. So you can test that out. I'm just, I'm just lifting and lowering. Again, just these variations in Utkatasana. You are welcome to take any variations you are feeling attracted to doing. You know, whatever is coming across your mind that you would like to do, you should do it. Good. One more. So I'm just elevating my heels and lowering. And then I'm going to come up. Urdva Hastasana. So this upward hand salute. And then bringing the hands down to the heart center or to your side, breathe. Nice, long exhale. Notice, can you enhance the ease around your face, around your neck, around your throat? One more breath here. 
Receive your inhale. Allow that exhale to release. I'm going to go ahead and come in. in so many different um, ways as far as the identifiers. I've heard it called horse. I've heard it called sun god, sun goddess. The point of it is that it feels hopefully really good in your hips. Some people are going to be able to maintain a real upright stance through the spine. Some people are going to need to hinge forward a little bit. Okay, you just need to respect how you feel in your joints. I'm going to come up and I'm going to come down. And as I do this, I'm still trying to put equal weight across the, the heels, across the balls of the feet. I want to think about lengthening my thigh bones because that's what helps you, right? That intention of length, right, through the thighs and length through the spine helps you enhance that space in your hips. This is another area that, especially in external rotation, my hips are really open and available so you find your depth it doesn't mean it's effortless but appropriate effort so i'm just coming up a little bit lowering down so i'm just trying to warm up the hips ah exhale as fully as you can a couple more times we'll shake it out and then we'll come back in and do some variations with the heels if you've been in my classes, you know, I like to do a lot of variations with elevating the heels. So before I come out, I've come back into more of a neutral stance, hips, knees, ankles, and then I'm bringing my legs together, shaking it out. I bring my hands to my heart a lot. Okay, so it just, it's an expression of how I feel on the inside. From a physical perspective, you can use your hands, you can use your thumbs, to lift the sternum. And that allows the shoulders to go back and down so we're broader across the collarbones. The neck can release tension. So I'm gonna come back into that wide external rotation. Come into your depth, make those adjustments. Lengthen through the spine. Feel how easy it is to kind of sink and see if you can use the muscles at the base of your torso. Okay, so the low, these glute muscles that from every angle, right? These inner thigh muscles, the low deep abs. Okay, and then we're gonna lift a heel. When you lift a heel, if you're exploring this, notice if your ankle wants to wander, I'm just gonna alternate. Again, this is effortful without it being constricting to your breath, to the inner flow of your energy. So we're centering, focused, but we're still at ease, right, with our breath. Couple more. That doesn't mean physically that I'm at ease. <laughs> I'm kind of shaking, okay, with this focused effort. One more each side. And then I'm gonna elevate both heels, lengthen, hands can come to your heart. We'll be here one more breath, maybe. You can come out anytime. And then carefully come up, release your heels. Again, so I don't hurry, I try not to, hurry in or out of poses. That's usually where, if we're gonna have issues, that's where they will show up. I'm just gonna minimize this real quick, okay. I want to do a forward fold, okay? So if you want to, so we're going to do a, a wide stance forward fold with some variations, okay? So if you would like to have any props, blocks, chair, anything, I love to think about a wide straddle as um, just a wide-legged downward-facing dog, okay? So hands could be at your hips or maybe behind you. With my legs wide, I'm in a slight internal rotation. I feel more anchored. So I'm trying to grab the floor, drawing energy up, inhale, exhale, hinge, lengthen. So again, you, you could keep your arms back behind you. You could bring your hands down to your legs. 
to props. You could, if you can touch the floor or walk your blocks away, then you can find even more length through the spine or a chair is great. Where you're trying to support space, that supported elongation throughout the torso. Release tension in the neck. Make sure that you feel all that supported length and space in your hips, in your low back. If a twist feels like a good idea, take it. Good. Again, if you're twisting, make sure you even out. Trying to keep the weight, the weight equal in your feet, the hips level. Please don't be in a hurry to come up and your legs could bend. Okay, but grab the floor with your feet. Okay, make sure your legs feel active. Come up midway, checking in with your blood pressure. As all feels good, then carefully come up. You can step the feet closer together. Lengthen through your spine. Again, Urdhva Hastasana, upward salute. Could be a little bit of extension, that back bend. And then hands lower to the heart, to your sides. Receive, receive the benefits of your practice. Allow them to integrate throughout your practice. <sighs> We're going to do some lunges. Okay, from potentially from downward facing dog. Again, maybe you'll have your blocks toward the front of your mat. I have my cork blocks that always make me happy. Okay, they're just so solid. All right, so first we're gonna go into forward fold, stepping back, staying in down dog um, for a couple of breaths. So inhale, reach up, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana, intense stretch pose. Inhale to come up midway. Again, maybe linger in your Uttanasana for two or three or four breaths. Explore or bend and straighten your legs or bend and lessen the bend. Lift and lower heels. It's such a healing, like mentally emotionally cathartic kind of position, folding inward, releasing tension. I'm gonna come up midway. I'm gonna have my blocks just to make sure that they're really handy, but still gonna step back to plank or child's pose or downward facing dog. Legs can be bent, heels can be up. Explore, how does this feel to your neck? to your shoulders. Can you find awareness in the inseam, the inner line of your legs? Can you elongate from your heels to the top of your inner thighs? Can that enhance the length through your torso? Just one more breath here. I wanna come down to all fours, move through cat and cow, okay? So adjust your stance, feel free to put any support underneath your knees. And we're just moving through the spine. Smooth, deep breaths. Can you connect the movement, again, to those inner thighs, the base of the torso muscles, so the low, deep abdominals. You connect with those, connect with obliques, and you will have less tension in the neck and shoulder. So you can test this out. Just as it feels appropriate, you might look to the left, you might look to the right. And then re-enter downward facing dog or extended child's pose. So you can come into a lunge from here or from all fours, either way. And I'm gonna take my right leg first back behind me. Okay, back end up a few times. 
just make, allows me to check in with my hip in this direction. And then I might, as long as it's okay with that left hip and with both shoulders, you can open up and it can just feel delightful. That's my hope, okay, for you. So you could open up, you could take any variations in plank, you could bend your knee, come forward. So I just wanna spend a few breaths here and you can hold it in stillness, you can move. You wanna feel strong and at ease simultaneously. All right, I'm gonna bring my right foot forward. You want to get it forward enough so there's no stress on the knee. And for many, it'll stop too early. So make adjustments so that your knee is stacked over your heel. You might use blocks. So what I'm doing now is I'm just lessening the bend and increasing the bend and making those little adjustments. I'm trying to find space in the hips, space in the low back throughout the spine. So we'll explore the lunge, so the bent knee variation first. And I wanna grow my torso. So I feel like I'm grabbing the floor again with my feet. So the right foot, it's like it's pulling the mat back. The left foot is pulling the mat forward. Okay, so I feel this connection to those inseams, those low deep abs. And maybe you don't need any props. So you can test that out. Can you lift your low belly up away from that right leg. So I'm trying to, again, lengthen the right leg, okay? And yet, send the sitting bones back. Lengthen through your torso as though you're still in plank. Or if you take your arms forward and alongside those ears, potentially like that idea of holding that foam roller, right? Like you're offering something out in front of you. Breathe, lots of effort here, there's nothing easy here. And then carefully, hands can lower to the blocks or to your mat, and you can step back to down dog, to plank, to child's pose. Breathe. I love to pause in between sides. Good. Ah, oh, so nice. I'm going to have to, I got a low battery message. So. Okay. Can you all still hear me? So sorry, in between sides. Okay. It's gonna be a little further away sounding. I'm so sorry. That was a test. <laughs> okay. But you can all still hear me. Yeah, okay. All right, if not, just chat in the box and I'll correct something, I'll figure it out. Just to make sure I'm not muted. Okay, all right. We gotta do second side or we're gonna be so off kilter. All right, so I'm gonna, um, because I'm standing, can we all meet in standing? Oh, I see a chat. Oh, you can actually hear better now. Well, awesome. <laughs> Those mixed blessings, right? Okay. All right, I'm gonna come back to standing. We'll get there, I promise. We'll get to the second side. Okay. Inhale to reach up. Exhale to fold forward. Pause in your forward fold. Feel the difference between your sides. Maybe shift your weight a little forward, a little back. So you can feel that the right leg is so different than the left. Maybe even your right torso versus the left, the right side of your neck. We're just going to be here one more breath. And then again, step back your position, your exploration. So, left leg, lift up, explore movement. Leg in the hip joint. How does your leg movement affect the rest of the body? Explore, 
Several breaths here. One more. And then in your way, bring your left foot forward. Help it get as far forward as you need until your left knee is stacked. You know, I'm not worried, like if it's too, for me, if it's too long of a stance, it's okay. There's not impact on the knee. Um, but if it's too short, that can be not good. Not good for the knee or the hip. Okay. So now we're lessening the bend, increasing the bend. We're not, we don't live equally within the body. So this side could feel very, very different. Try to notice as you explore if your shoulders tend to clench up. Um, is your, are you exhaling smoothly? What can you do to assist and support this position? Again, we're gonna be, we're gonna bend that left knee. I wanna grab the mat. Okay, so my left foot is pulling the mat back, right, to ignite all this, and the right foot is pulling it forward, and I want to feel all that support, right, from below to assist that lift of the abdominals, laying through the torso. Maybe you notice you don't need those blocks. If you still need them, that's okay. Totally fine, right? But just see, explore. One arm, one fingertip. Breathe and breathe and breathe. If we were going to transition to Virabhadrasana 3, Warrior 3, do you have buoyancy in the pose? Last effort here. And then exit in your way. Okay? Two the pose you want to be in. Child pose, down dog, plank. Couple more smooth, deep breaths. If you haven't yet, go ahead and come down to all fours. Just shift your hips to see how you feel. Let's go into cat and cow. So lengthen, open, exhale, round. Allow your breath to inspire your movement. Allow your head to go along for the ride, not to anticipate it. Just one more. We're going to meet in forward fold, um, making our way back to standing, okay? So in your way, we'll, we'll meet there ultimately. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to down dog and walk my hands or my feet, I haven't decided yet, okay? So just checking in. I'm going to walk my hands. Explore forward fold. You're never stuck in any position. You're welcome to come up midway or if you like to roll up, as long as you're doing it in a supported way, you come up feeling good, blood pressure rise, it's all good. And check in once you're up, never hurry, please. Check in again with your shoulders, with your neck. We're going to do a little bit more standing, okay? So we're going to do some warrior two side angle, maybe half moon, okay? So have space, but also have props, um, a chair, you know, things that you find helpful. All right, so warrior two is one leg is in external rotation. I'm going to do this leg first. So I think that this is your right leg. Okay, so I'm going to open it up. I'm going to step the left foot back. Okay, so again, you're just trying to make sure that when you explore, you have freedom of movement, no joint 
is talking to you, okay? And nothing near the joint is talking, okay? So I'm gonna hold this, and yet still I wanna feel, so this time rather than trying to pull the mat in toward the midline, I'm actually trying to separate it. So I'm pressing my left heel at a back angle. That's really helping me anchor with this leg. And this one, I can lift and lower the heel and then feel like I'm trying to send it away that way. So I've got this supported space. It really is a combo of a reach and a pulling inward. Okay, so we're finding that balance. And I'm reaching my arms from my torso, flipping, okay, the palm to face up, coming into reverse. And then center over the leg, your variation of side angle. Let's do it a couple more times. Inhale, center. Exhale toward the back. Inhale, center. Hinge, exhale, your side angle. One more time. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, and again, if I'm going too fast, you can slow it down. Exhale, can we hold in our side angle? The answer could be no. One more breath here. Coming back to warrior two, it always has felt like a mean transition, and then release some of that intensity. So I'm gonna close this off, but I'm gonna come back into the same side. So stepping the feet together, same side, okay? So we're going to either use a block or I have my handy dandy little doggy couch, okay, right here. Um, so you're gonna use whatever you feel will offer you stability. So half moon, right, is, is this pose. I have my same leg, okay, the right leg in external rotation. I'm keeping my knee slightly bent because I want to feel the glute and I want to feel all this length, okay? So you can keep your other foot on the mat and be here. And this is half moon, okay? Ardha Chandrasana. Or lengthen, deepen the hinge, okay? And if the lifted leg is strong, you could take it forward. You could take it back. There's a lot of work in the glute, but you need to make sure that your abdominals are really assisting. So the space around the neck and shoulders. You don't need your right hand on anything, theoretically. Just one more breath. And then you would come to standing. Breathe. That's a lot of effort. So pause in your in-between stance, whether it is like what I'm doing, samastitihi, or you wanna do a vinyasa, or something that I don't think to mention. But you're gonna have a few breaths here to just explore the effects of those positions. You should really feel like you have two separate halves your breath is the connector. It's that vehicle, as it travels through us, it illuminates, it informs. So there's real value, I think, to pausing in between sides to enhance our self-awareness. One more breath. And that pausing can mean just doing some sequence that is neutral. Okay, that just, it lights you up from within on what feels one way and what feels different. Okay, so warrior two and that flow on the other side. Good, so this time your right leg is your anchor leg, your left leg is opening. I'm trying to think about mirroring okay, with my directions. Maybe you're able to get that heel to arch alignment, but what's the more valuable 
uh, tool for you is as you lessen and, and, and as you decrease and increase the bend of your knee, check in with your joints, your ankles, your knees, your hips. It doesn't have to look like a pose in a magazine. It needs to feel like you have supported flow for your blood flow, your breath. Couple more. And then land and see if you can take that uh, right heel back at an angle and that left, right? You're pushing, creating a sense of expansion, wide extension, down and up, okay? Here we go, I'm flipping my left palm. I'm gonna go back here, inhale to center, exhale to reach. Inhale to center, exhale. I'm trying to keep the bend of the left knee constant. Whatever movement you're doing with your spine, with your arms, needs to feel good. You're also welcome to pause and not go in the flow, right? Not move in the flow. The next time I come in here, I'm going to stay in that side angle for just a couple breaths. Breathe and breathe. Support space in your hips. Imagine coming into Ardha Chandrasana half moon from here. Return to that warrior, that strong, focused position. Yep. <laughs> and then carefully come up. Yep, the doggies are saying hello. And then bring your feet together. <laughs> and pause. Another breath. Allow it to just be music. <laughs> okay, so we know we have Ardha Chandrasana on the second side, okay? So I don't have my same props on this side, okay? So I might, I know, I'm gonna use my block, okay? So I'm opening up that same side leg, getting my block handy, making sure it's slightly bent, laying through the torso, okay? So this can be your half moon, it's fantastic, all right? Maybe, right, make your prop fit your position. Check in again. Can you explore movement? If you're lifting the leg, can you explore movement with it? Can your sides support the length in your torso? Notice if you're locking anything. Is your breath flowing? Another breath of exploration. And then as I stand, I'm gonna face the wind, my window is over here. So I'm facing this way as I come up. Inhale to reach up. Exhale, hands can come to your heart again for a few breaths. If you wanna move through a vinyasa, take it. Okay, be in the position or in, move through your sequence that feels inviting to you. Couple more breaths. One more. When you're ready, return to a standing position. Again, without hurry. I like to do dancer, okay? Um, maybe you want to use a strap to help grab the foot. Um, you could just have it be back there and not take hold. Make sure however you're taking hold of your foot, it doesn't get in the way up here, okay? So because I have flexibility to allow it, I go into it with my arms in external rotation. Doesn't matter which leg you start with. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand on my left, okay, with the knee unlocked and capture 
my right. Engage your inner thighs. Engage from the base of your torso all the way up. Your other arm could be on something for balance, or you're reaching in opposite directions. So that lifted leg, that knee, okay, so you're hugging the inner thighs in toward each other and reaching your knee back, 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 back. And the opposite arm could come out in front. You could reach both arms back behind you, but you need to feel stable. That broad, open heart. You can increase the bend of your standing leg and decrease. So there's added challenge here to the balance. Couple more. And carefully release. We're gonna come into a forward fold in between sides. Okay, however you wanna enter. Lengthen, knees could be bent or straight. Breathe and breathe and breathe. One more breath. Think about how do you want to exit? How do you want to return to standing? Do you want to come up midway, come up lower to neutral spine? Do you want to roll up? Come up in a way that serves you, that serves your practice. Breathe. Breathe and breathe. So we're in a, when we're in dancer, we're in a standing half bow pose. You can also think of it as um, camel pose, right? Um, but what's really, really important is that never, no back bend should compromise any sensation in your low back. So you wanna make sure you're supporting from the base of your glutes, your inner thighs, and your abdominals, and that feeling of wrapping Hugging in toward the midline. Somehow I keep moving my mat, which only bothers me. <laughs> okay, so before you even take hold of your leg, whichever leg you haven't lifted back there, I'm, I'm putting my left foot back. So before I even lift, I want to feel the sensations of a lunge, right? Like I'm trying to hug the mat in toward the midline. I'm contracting my abdominals. Unlocking that standing leg. Then, as you're ready, if it's appropriate, take hold of your foot, inner thighs engage, all those same muscles supporting as you kick the lifted leg back. What you do with the other arm, there are so many variations, everybody, but I really care most about how are you supporting all of your joints. How are you receiving and letting go of breath. Maybe increasing and decreasing the bend of your standing leg. You can play with the hinge. Another breath. Ooh. And then carefully come to standing. <sighs> Reach up again. If you want to move through a vinyasa, go for it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, so vinyasa, sun salutation, if nothing makes any real sense to you, then be, just be present. Breathe through the feelings that you feel, take any positions that are just calling your name. One more breath. I wanna come into a squat, okay, so, the deep squat, right? Whatever is okay for your hips, knees, ankles. This is a squat. Any kind of bend here, right? Thinking about a chair back there is a squat. If it's appropriate, you can, it's shifting so you can see everything, go back and all the way down. For some of us, this feels really good. For others, it's a total nightmare. Okay, so find the squat that you can be in for a couple of breaths, maybe. So I have my arms on the inside of my legs, hands together at my heart. Uh, my heels are able to stay down, you know. Okay, lengthen. Just another breath or so in whatever squat you're exploring. We're going to go into Uttanasana from here. So I want to be here for another breath because it feels so good to me. 
and then transition in your way to a forward fold. You might, depending on your, you know, what you feel like doing, you might take it wider. For the last effort here in our forward fold. You might go into a twist or a side stretch. Good. I'm just shifting, so don't you worry. All right. When you're ready, you're going to come into a seated position. I just want to move this down so I can see better. Here we go. <sighs> okay, so, so the rules in my classes are that once we come to seated, we almost never come back up until we're done. <laughs> so we're done with class. Okay, so I want you to check in. Does it feel okay to bring soles of the feet together, knees out to the sides? What feels okay for your body? Do you need to sit back? Do you need that support behind you? Does it feel good to take hold of the feet, maybe hinge forward? Hmm. Smooth, deep breaths. Hmm. So we're starting to wind down. We're making our way toward Shavasana. We still have some time. So I want to do some um, bridges. And I love to put a block underneath my sacrum. Um, one, it's not required, okay? Two, any, any kind of thing. Like, so if you have a foam roller, if you wanna put your feet on a chair uh, as you come up, like there's so many different things. The feet on a wall can feel really, really good, okay? So I want you to lay down and arm can go out to the sides, your knees can come in, and you can shift side to side. I just think this feels so good. I do this multiple times a day. Breathe and breathe and breathe some more. When you're on your back, can you adjust your shoulder blades so that they're drawn a little bit toward each other and you get that sense of openness across your collarbones, openness across your heart, and aside from the mat, maybe limiting your movement with your head, you should feel at ease, you know, because the mat can pull on your hair, <laughs> which is not pleasant, but hopefully you feel a sense of ease around your neck, okay? So I'm gonna grab my block, all right? Again, if you don't have a block, you're gonna hold your bridge at the appropriate height, Right? And, and because if you don't have a support, you're not as relaxed in this. Okay? If you have support, then it can feel really nice. Now, I put it at the highest height that the block is available to me. That might not feel good for you. So you could go at the mid. Okay? You need to place the block at the height that offers you a pleasant feeling. Nothing that we're doing should feel like torture. Okay, so this, whatever bridge you're in, hopefully is feeling this supported openness, supported length through your torso. The feet, the heels are below the knees. I am engaging my inner thighs. So if you're using, so here I'm going up, I'm going off my prop. Now there's work. Lowering onto my prop. Oh, I feel so nice. Okay, so make sure that your neck feels like you have this supported space, and I'm just going up a little and down. I'm gonna do that a couple more times. And then I'm gonna land. So if you're like tired, you can do the, the rest of the sequence with your hips all the way down, okay? So I'm just supporting all that length, and I'm gonna carefully explore as long as you feel supported. One leg to come up and the other, okay? 
So again, you can do all of this with your spine and seat down. Legs can be bent or as I straighten my legs, they're gonna go out of the view of the camera. <sighs> Anytime, this position is just hopefully feeling really, really nice for your mind, for your mood. It's calming. That's the point of it. It's supposed to be calming. Couple more breaths. If shoulder stand is a part of your practice, this is the great position to transition to shoulder stand as well as other variations. Okay, so I'm gonna look up toward my feet. So the legs can come down, I'm moving my block out of the way, okay? And I just adore this pose and I'll take as many variations as I can think of. I, I will, I do this every morning and most evenings <laughs> before bed. So at when, when you feel like it, with a sense of support, without tension, you're gonna lower down. So we're meeting in hugging the knees in. Hmm. We need this, I need this. I, I, I hope that you're feeling the benefit of this. Um, coming into happy baby, and you can use a strap around your feet. The whole thing about happy baby is it should feel uncompromising around your shoulders, your hips. So the knees, I know I'm wearing dark, dark, okay? But the knees are coming toward the armpits. The feet, and it's like if I flip this around, I would be in a squat, okay? Kind of a variation of a squat with my chest lifted. Okay, so I still have a sense of lifted chest. I'm retracting those shoulder blades so that I have this supportive ease around the neck. You can stay here with bent knees or go into that straddle. <laughs> you might move in this pose. Okay, so find your variations. I started to speak slower because it's so calming for me. Okay, you could do one leg and then the other. And then as it feels good, soles of the feet can come together, knees out to the sides, and you could still use a strap wrapping around your um, feet and offering that counter resistance. I'm not trying to send my knees away from my body. I'm trying to send my knees away from the hips. And that supports length through the torso. Okay. And then carefully again, hugging the knees in. So this is a, I just wanted to show, this is a real typical time. I didn't make it convenient for me. That I would use my foam roller. You could use a rolled up towel, or a ball, or just continue to um, massage your lower back, right? But I just wanted to show, since it's here, and I do this a lot, <laughs> that because this doesn't feel good on a block, okay? So, but I put the foam roller right there, kind of toward the top of my sacrum. And then I lift up and I hold this in place. And it feels so nice. <laughs> but I won't stay here very long. I just, just in case, and if you have a foam roller, maybe you've done this just a million times. But um, the more I incorporate the foam roller or um, other kind of massage therapy type tools into every yoga practice I do for myself, okay? And I roll my spine and my thighs and all that. Okay, so if you're enjoying this, you're welcome to stay here. I'm gonna set it to the side. I wanna get a full body stretch. Is that my mat is getting in my way? And this is another time that you could use something right, if, that you're holding in between your palms so that you feel the supported stretch 
in the muscles along your sides. So what I'm doing here is I have my foam roller, I'm holding it between my palms. I'm bending my elbows like I'm holding this foam roller between my elbows, okay? And lengthen, and then maybe reach overhead. I'm reaching through my heels, lengthening through my spine, trying to grow, 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 and increase the space, right, all throughout the body. And then bring it back up. Let's do that a couple times. So we're reaching the arms overhead, whether or not you have a prop. And then reaching up toward the ceiling or over toward the opposite wall. One more time. And then I'm gonna lose the prop here in a moment and come into a laying down supine, we're in a supine position um, in a, into a side stretch. So you can think of this as crescent moon. Okay, so I'm gonna take my legs, I'm sorry, my, I don't know if my feet are fully in the, in the picture, but I'm gonna take my legs toward the camera, okay? So for me, this is my, my right leg is the leg I'm gonna cross on top of my left. So I'm crossing my ankles, but my hips are fairly level. I'm fairly level across my sacrum. And then I'm going to adjust my torso so I can get this, this crescent shape, right? But without elevating, my right shoulder. So I'm scooching a little bit with my shoulder blades, my torso. And then you need to find a position that is comfortable for your shoulders. And then I'm interlacing my fingers, or you can hold um, your right wrist and breathe. I'm trying to not pop my ribs like crazy. So I'm trying to pull them toward the mat. As I, so as I pull my ribs down, I want an open lifted heart. Hmm. Another breath. And then carefully come back to center between sides, just like we've done throughout class. You might hug your knees in or do any movement, any position that just gives you a sense of the asymmetry, right? So I, like, I think of this as coming into a mini Shavasana, just to feel and experience the effects of your practice. And then we're going to do the second side. So I start with the legs and taking my legs over to the right. I'm gonna cross my left ankle over my right, and then I do these shifting things, okay? So, because I'm trying to keep my pelvis where it's at, right? And I shift my shoulder blades, and then I come into this crescent, and now my right hand is taking hold of my left, yeah. But my shoulder blades are staying level. So again, I'm trying to keep that lifted open heart as the ribs pull down. And that involves obliques. So breathe into this support. You have all this strength and awareness and support from within you. And it can allow you to feel strong and grounded and focused and yet at ease. Allow your face to soften. Another breath. Allow the full exhale. Allow that inhale. As you're ready, undo the position and again, check in with any movements, any final movements. I'm going to guide you through uh, Shavasana and then you are welcome to stay longer or, or be done. But in this case, you are already home, <laughs> right? So I want you to find your comfortable position, whether it's on your back, on your side in child's pose or seated, I want you to really allow, allow that sense of letting go. 
allow that sense of ease. You want to feel so supported that there's no effort within you. And this release, this surrendering can feel emotional. And if that's the truth for you, allow it. We're holding a lot in, and this is the perfect opportunity to let it go. So I want you to feel completely supported by the ground. Allow a sense of heaviness in the bones. Let them descend. The soles of the feet, let them just feel released. The heels and the ankles, the lower leg bones. Allow that space in your ankles and your knees. Allow that space in your thighs, in your hips. In your pelvis. In your lower abdominals. Let go. In your solar plexus around your ribs. Allow the space to expand. Your body receives breath without any effort. In the chest, in the heart, everything is becoming lighter, more expansive. in the shoulders, down the length of your arms, to your fingertips, to the palms. You are receiving light and lightness. The wrists, the elbows, once again, the shoulders into your neck, allow space, ease. around the chin and the mouth, the throat. The cheeks and the nose, the ears, everything opens. Just feeling lighter. Your eyes, the forehead, the skull, Throughout your body, from the tips of your toes to the crown of your head, you have expanded. Allow the pauses between the breaths. In this moment, you are perfect. Allow and receive. Stay here and simply be When it's time, I want you to really be gentle and easy with yourself. Try to return to this sensation, this sense of ease and openness and rightness. Thank you all so, so much. Namaste.